Just like an engine burns air with fuel to create energy, so does the human body. Every cell, from the brain to the bicep, is powered by combining oxygen with the body's fuel stores of carbohydrate, fat and protein. Reduce the oxygen and poor endurance, muscle weakness and impaired brain function can follow. Altitude sickness symptoms can start at 8,000 feet. Guy will finish Pike's Peak at 14,000 feet. So he visits the University of Kent's Altitude Training Centre. OK. I'm an airy bugger. Should be all right. Professor Sam Makora, the director of research, is known around the world for his studies of endurance athletes and will test how much thin air will reduce Guy's performance. Sounds like we're in NASA or something, but I'd like an oxygen monitor on my brain and on my muscles. I'm sure there's a lot of preparation going into engines and chassis and tyres and petrol, you know, before the pipes peak. I don't think many boys will be going to this extent. To begin with, Professor Sam monitors Guy during a 10-minute test in normal sea level air. Keep pedaling. He measures Guy's heart rate, rate of breathing and reaction times. Very good. But it's actually a measure of sustained attention, so being able to focus. Come on, keep going, guy. Let's be honest, boys, it wasn't rocket science, was it? And so it was a bullseye that just flashed up on the screen, and when the bullseye flashed up, I pressed the button. And it came back with a time for how long it took for my finger to press the button from my brain recognising it. Here we go. OK, stop now. Stay on the bike. Next, oxygen is reduced to simulate 14,000 feet. Recording. And the test is repeated. Okay, side to. Everything was the same besides the oxygen content. What a difference that made. Feel okay? Hard, eh? <laughs> good. Come on, keep going, keep going. Very good. Your body tries to compensate for the lack of oxygen in the atmosphere by increasing ventilation. Keep focus, keep focus, keep going. <laughs> Don't give up, don't give up. You heard it, the state I was in, it was not pretty sounding, was it? Come on, unless you feel very sick, we keep going, OK? I was sort of struggling to see. As I was going that hard, I was having to breathe that heavy. Well, I'm backing out. Come on, guy, come on. Yes, yes. I was close to him, just in case he passed out. Keep going, keep going. Come on, let's be. Come on. Come on. Come on. It sounded like a murder scene. Okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> okay, yeah. Much longer, maybe another 30 seconds or a minute longer, I'd have passed out. But it was good. I like to be in that position where I'm pushing myself that hard. The results are bad. <sighs> The red line is uh, your uh, ventilation. Oh, that right. You are breathing in and out during the sea level simulated yes. race. Yes. But then the blue line is like you will find at the very top of Pikes Peak. And as you can see, there is a massive difference massive in ventilation. Difference, yeah. And also it doesn't stabilize, it keeps going up. Similar to the power loss in the engine, actually your fitness is reduced by 35% at the altitude um, that it will encounter at Pikes Peak. If you went to Pikes Peak, as you were today, yeah. you would really struggle. But the biggest concern is Guy's reaction times. His brain's processing speed dropped 15%. It's, a, it's quite a big drop. Is it? Yes. This is a clear sign of what we call mental fatigue. That's going to be very bad. He has to be um, well accustomed to altitude so they can perform at his maximum. There's cliff edges. I don't want a lot going wrong. And to be honest, I don't want to scratch my motorbike. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I don't want to be doing it. That bike's taken long enough to build. Guy's best solution is to regularly exercise at altitude. The body compensates for the thinner air by producing more red blood cells to carry oxygen around the bloodstream. Most elite athletes travel abroad to train at height. But not Guy. Guy is going to make a room that can have its oxygen content lowered. A hypoxic chamber at home. We're going to have a bit of a DIY, a bit of a DIY idea. He lines his walls and ceiling with polythene. Strong stuff, man. To make the room airtight. Kinky beggar at number two. You see what he's doing? All the alley heavy things, aren't they? Then he rigs up two hypoxic yeah. generators. Oh, they're on wheels. To reduce the amount of oxygen in the room from 21 
to 16%. When the room is equivalent to the thin air at Pike's Peak, a match won't burn. Spot on. Trained away in it, sweated a bit. But I'm still a bit hot and bothered now. It's not a pleasant experience. This is perfect now. I have got my own hypoxic chamber at home, and um, yeah, there's no better way to acclimatise to Pike's Peak than at home. Guy trains in there day after day after day. But it will all be for nothing if his bike isn't up to scratch.